Mid-Grow Center. It's another gala premiere today in WGN's Michigan Boulevard Playhouse as we present the charming young French star, Simone Simone, in a delightful romantic comedy, Model Princess. Miss Simone is not only won international fame as a screen actress, but she is also appearing at present in a delightful new musical comedy, Three After Three, now playing at the Erlanger Theater in Chicago. It's a sellout house here in the studio again today, but the best seats in the theater are always yours in Fifth Row Center. The lights are being dimmed, and before the first act curtain, we've just time to tell you that supporting Simone Simone in this afternoon's play is a fine cast of famous players, including Olin Soleil, Louise Barclay, Brett Morrison, Rene Rodier, and Willard Waterman. Our drama, Model Princess, was written by Noel B. Gerson. Harold Stokes conducts the orchestra, and the production is directed by Blair Wallace. And now, there's the curtain, and the show is on. takes place in the busy newsroom of a metropolitan newspaper in a great American seaport. The city editor is speaking. Marley. Joe Marley. Yeah, boy. Joe, come here. What? I got a peach of a story for you. Uh, another debutante drinking champagne out of whatever debutantes drink champagne out of. No, no, no. This is a real story. Mm. Look, take a photographer down with you and go to the docks for the President Van Buren is stuck. His Highness, the famous Prince Paul, is on board with his new bride. She's a French gal, apparently. Uh, we don't know much about it. In fact, I didn't even know the prince was married, so it sounds like it ought to be a good yarn. Do either of them speak English, or do I use sign language? Ah, you find that out for yourself. Okay, sunshine. I wish I was back at police court. We could always get a story out of the judge. And maybe a free lunch, too. And now we move to the salon of Madame Tourney, one of the city's most famous dress designers. Madame Tourney is sitting in her office, working when the door opens. You called for me, Madame? Oh, Rochelle. Yes, sit down, please. Merci, Madame. Rochelle, you have been working here as a model for a long time? Oui, Madame, for three years. Ever since I came over here from Paris. You've enjoyed your work? Oh, but I have, Madame. I would rather work here and wear your wonderful clothes than anywhere else in the whole world. Oh, madam, you are not going... Oh, no, no, Rochelle. I am not going to let my most attractive model go. I'd be a fool if I did anything as stupid as that. I, uh, well, I don't quite know how to explain this to you. I have a very unusual job for you. That is, if you care to take it. Oh, we are going to have a side show at a racetrack or something? No, no, no. Please understand, my dear. If you don't want to do this, it will be perfectly all right with me. I understand, madam. Well, let me begin at the beginning, then. A very important ambassador is sitting in the next room. An ambassador? Yes. He saw your picture in one of the magazines the other day, and he thinks you can help his country. Prince Paul, who is the heir to the throne, is arriving here today on a goodwill trip. Oh, yes, I know. I read all about him. He plays polo, and he's very handsome... And he speaks five languages, and of course, he's very rich. How would you like to be the princess? I. <laughs> oh, excuse me, please, madam. But now you joke me with kidding. Uh, I am being very serious. The prince and his advisors decided that without a wife, he would become entangled with too many romantic young American girls. You know, wanted to marry him. And besides, a wife will help convince our businessmen that the prince is solid and serious. You are young and charming, and you are beautiful. And, of course, you can wear clothes, or you would not be here at Madame Tournay's. 
They have already announced that the princess is with Paul, but it is not so. There is no one. And that is why they come to you. The ambassador will pay you $10,000 if you will pretend to be the princess for a few weeks. They will take you out of the ship in a special cutter, and you will start at once. Do you want to do it? Oh, but I cannot. To be alone with a man. Oh, well, what will my friends think of? Oh, me? there is nothing to fear. You will be quite safe. Prince Paul is a gentleman, and this is a business agreement. But everyone will know it was I. Not at all. We will change your makeup, your hairstyle, your whole appearance. People who have seen your picture in the fashion magazines won't recognize you. And neither will your friends. You will be a new person. The Princess Bebe. I, Roger Gabi, a princess? Oui, Your Highness. No, Your Highness. Oh, yes, madame, I will do it. Where is that ambassador? Your princess is coming, Prince Charming. You're doing beautifully, Rochelle. You could not have done better if you'd been born a princess. Oh, these past three days have just been like a dream. Sometimes I can close my eyes and almost imagine that I am a princess. And when I open them and see a room as big as this one, I know I must be at least a duchess. <laughs> is this the grand ballroom of the hotel? Do they hold big meetings here? Oh, this is just the royal suite. I wonder. Do they think kings and queens and princesses are bigger than other people? The rooms are always so much larger. Uh, this afternoon may be rather difficult for you. It'll be the first time you see a member of the press alone. It'll be difficult for you, too. Going to start building a new embassy and making a big speech. Uh, this won't be a novel experience for me, my dear. I've had enough experience with cornerstones to be an expert stonemason by this time. I've been making speeches since I was ten years old. Yes, and it'll be very boring for you. But I am enjoying myself. And I'm going to enjoy being interviewed today. I hope. Now, just remember this. If you get into difficulty, a member of the staff will be in the next room. I will remember. <laughs> Mr. Joseph Morley of the Star Express is here by appointment to see Her Highness. You may show him in. Are you leaving, Your Highness? Yes, I must go. And do your best. Oh, dear. I shall try very hard. Adieu, Paul. Adieu. Entrez. Uh, Your Highness, uh, I'm Joe Morley, the Star Express. How do you do? Will you not come in? Uh, thanks. Please sit down. Well, uh, <clears throat> maybe you can tell I'm a little bit on the edgy side. You see, this is the first time I've ever interviewed a princess. How nice. We're starting together, then. This is the first time I have been interviewed alone by a newspaper reporter. It is? Yes. I mean, you see, the first time in your country. Oh, oh. didn't quite get you there for a minute. Well, then, shall we begin? Mm-hmm. Have you been a reporter very long? Well, almost five years now. Do you enjoy your work? Yeah, pretty well. But I'd like to get away from this sort of stuff. You know, I don't like to pry into other people's lives. Well, what would you like to do? Well, I own some property up in Vermont. I'd like to go up there and live. Ah, it's wonderful up there in the winter. Everything, as far as you can see, is all still and white and sparkling. It's cold outside and warm inside and crisp everywhere. That sounds enchanting. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the whole trouble. It's too good. I'll never get there. Well, why not? Well, I can't go up alone. I'm not married. I don't even know any girl who'd want to bury herself up in the Vermont hills with me. I should think any girl would love living that kind of a life. You do? Of course I do. Well, why can't you find the right girl? <laughs> you tell me, sister. Deb, I beg your pardon, Your Highness. I... <laughs> oh, that's all right. Oh, really? I'm terribly sorry. But don't apologize. I'm okay with that crack. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. What kind of an interview is this, anyway? You're asking me all the questions. Now then, what about you? Oh, there's nothing very remarkable about me. I was born in Paris, 
And I lived there most of my life, and uh, here I am. Mm. You're being rather modest. No, that's all there is to me. Yeah, well, that isn't every girl who marries a prince and will someday be a queen. Not every girl wants to be a princess or a queen. No? What do they want? Maybe they would like to live on a farm in, in Vermont. Uh-huh. Okay, kid me if you want to, but I'm going to use that in my story anyway. Princess would prefer life on simple farms. Now, you are kidding me. No, not a chance. Uh, tell me, Princess, uh, you don't mind my getting personal. Uh, how'd you happen to fall for his nibs? Yeah, I, I mean, Prince Paul. Oh, uh, I, um, the, um, the, the prince is... Oh, uh... oh, doggone, there I go pulling another boner. Please forgive me. I, uh... I imagine it's pretty hard for a girl not to fall in love with a man as good-looking as Prince Paul. Mm, there's nothing to forgive. Well, I've taken up enough of your time, Princess. Thanks for the interview and uh, for everything. It's, uh, really, it's been swell. Perhaps we shall meet again. No, not much chance. We live in different worlds, Princess. Perhaps they are not as far apart as you think. The life of a princess is not very different from that of a, a closed mother. Yeah. Well, that's a neat way of putting it, anyway. Well, so long. Why, why don't you come to dinner with us? Me? Hmm. Why not? Well, why not? Meet us here at 8 o'clock. Well, won't his nibs, uh, I mean, won't the prince be sore? Oh, I don't think so. He's very wide-minded. Oh. At 8. At 8. <laughs> Beautifully, Princess. I love to walk with you. It's been a wonderful evening, Your Highness. Oh, please don't call me that. Why don't you just call me Rochelle? Hmm? I thought your name was Baby. Oh, oh yes. Oh, well, my, my friends all call me Rochelle. Oh. Am I a friend? I hope so. Oh, God, you know, I, I wish you weren't a princess. Married to a prince. Why do you wish something like that? Well, it puts limitations on friendship. You mean you would like me better, maybe if I if I were a shop girl or an airplane stewardess or or a model? <laughs> maybe you speak with an accent, Rochelle, but you sure do get the dress. <laughs> we dance together as though we had done it always. Let's keep right on dancing. The music is stopped. So it has. I wonder why they stopped in the middle of the... Hey, look. What's happening? It's a fire. Oh, hey, this isn't so good. Look at those flames. Come on. Hey, this is a stampede. Are you all right, Michelle? Well, hang on to me. I'll get you out of here. Oh! What's the matter? Oh, my ankle. Oh! oh can't you walk? Oh, What is you going? No, 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 not a chance. If we get out of this inferno, we'll get out together. Here. Okay, put your arms around my neck now. Up. All right. Hang on, kid. Here we go. Princess. Rochelle, are you all right? We're safe. We're out. Say something, please. Uh, are you ill or what's wrong? Oh, darling. Darling. Give her air. She's fainted, buddy. You called me what? darling. Are you all right? You saved my life, and you called me darling. I called you... Oh, I'm sorry. That was a pretty rotten thing to do. I keep forgetting you're married to the prince. I was holding in my arms... I lost track of things, I suppose. Please, don't think too badly of me. Whatever I think of you, and I shall think many things, it'll never be that. I promise you. Our scene again changes. It is two days later. We go back to the royal suite of Prince Paul at the Hotel Ritz. The prince is reading a newspaper. Come in, come in. Please, sir, I want to speak to you, Paul, your highness. But of course, I'm merely reading the papers. We have another fine press today, thanks to you. 
Oh, that's what I wish to speak to you about. I want to stop now. To end this silly farce at once. You want to do what? There's no pleasure in this game of pretending to be someone else. You've been very kind. You've been wonderful. And I cannot go on. I must stop. I must. Well, you cannot leave now. It is impossible. Why not? For well, there's too much at stake. If you were to walk away now, we'd be the laughing stock of the world. I would have no chance at all to get the loan we need from these American bankers. And thousands of men and women and children will go hungry, all because you have suddenly found this position distasteful to you. How can I go on? Pretending to be your wife when... When you're in love with that newspaper reporter? Yes. I'm terribly sorry, my dear. But you must try to understand my position, too. More than personal interest is at stake. The issue transcends personalities. I understand. But what am I to do? Oh, oh please tell me and help me. Simply be a little patient. In another two weeks, I hope to have the loan from these bankers, and my American visit will end. Then you can go to your friend and tell him the truth. And if he loves you as much as you do him, you will have no difficulty at all. Very well, then, Your Highness. I will keep up this game of make-believe a little longer. It is hard. But I will keep my body. I'm deeply grateful. I tell you, it is. Hey, who in blazes is calling me at four in the morning to find out if I'm me? I don't care if you got a story for me. I'm sleepy. Uh, huh? What's that? About the princess? What do you mean? What? Say, look, if you're trying to pull a gag, so help me, I... Yeah, all right. All right, I'll be over in the morning. Sure I will. First thing in the morning. How do you do? Please come in, Mr. Morley. Now let's get to the point. What's this all about? Mr. Morley, I am the Princess Bebe. Oh, really? You are the Princess Bebe. You may jail if you like, but I have ample proof. Here, look at these papers before we continue this discussion any further. Hmm? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, this seems authentic enough, but I... Well, what is this? I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, the story is very simple. I was a dancer at the Folle Bergère in Paris. I met Prince Paul there, and we fell in love. I am not of royal blood, and so at first we thought marriage was out of the question. But we decided nothing should stand in our way, and so we were secretly married at Cadentive. And we have kept the marriage secret. Paul wanted to make it public, but I was afraid the notoriety would injure him. And so we had a quarrel. And at the last moment, I did not accompany him. After reconsidering, I decided I had been a little bit hasty, and I came on the next ship. Because of the war, I did not arrive here until yesterday. And then I discovered that a little Parisian imposter was calling herself Princess Bebe and has been appearing everywhere with my husband. An imposter? You, Princess Bebe? You know, this is a little hard to get all in one swallow. Let me continue, please. You have written many stories in your paper about this, this artificial princess. So I want you to know the truth. Now, here are some of my pictures. Now you can print the truth in your newspaper. Yeah. So she isn't even married to him. Yeah, now I can print the truth, all right. Joe Morley, the world's number one sap. Yeah, that, that'll make a great story. You see, Mr. Morley is here, doesn't want to see me. That is right, Your Highness. He insists on seeing Prince Paul. The ambassador telephoned to say he has urgent business with me. Mr. Morley can wait. Ah, Mr. Morley can't wait. 
And I can tell you everything the ambassador has to say. Joe, what are you doing? Take a look at these pictures, Prince Paul. Do you recognize this lady? Baby. Yeah. Mr. Morley, where did you get these photos? What do you think? From the little lady herself, not a motion picture. From Baby? Then she is here. Yeah, you catch on fast. Baby? But I am Baby, am I not? Hey, look, let's all take our hair down now and quit pretending. You've had a lot of fun with me, haven't you, Princess? I've never known anyone just like you before, but I've heard about your type. A lady gigolo. I hope you get a lot of laughs out of this. I will, when I get my sense of humor back. Bebe here? Where is she, Mr. Morley? Where is she? Rochelle, Bebe is my wife. Your wife? Oh, Joe. Now I see why you're angry. But I knew nothing, Joe. Oh, please listen to me. I didn't make a fool of you. Honestly, I didn't. Well, you tried hard enough. Oh, don't do this to me, Joe. All I ask is that you listen to me. No, I won't listen to you. I listen to you too much already. Star reporter Morley mixes honey with printer's ink. Mixture doesn't gel. Result? The ink comes off the page. All right, then. Don't listen to a word I have to say. Well, there's nothing I would say to you anyway. You're mean and contemptible and unfair and suspicious and vulgar and horrible and, and prejudiced and hateful and terrible and... And nasty. And super nasty. Mm. I don't know why I ever like you. I didn't. I never did like you. I hate you. I never want to talk to you again. I never want to see you again. I won't either. Oh, why did I ever leave Paris? At least if men there were well, gentlemen, they still acted like gentlemen. This is a finish, Your Highness. I don't want the ten thousand dollars. I don't want anything. I'm leaving now. Goodbye. Poor child. Hey. Hey, what was that she said about $10,000? Were you paying her to pose as the princess? Naturally, I was paying her. This was strictly a business arrangement. Nothing more. Oh, I've made a nice mess out of this. Rochelle! Rochelle! Oh, she's gone. You're a discerning young man. Well, I've got to find her and tell her I didn't understand. I made a terrible mistake. There are many entrances to this hotel. You'll have a difficult time. Well, do you know where I can reach her then? I do not. Uh, you mean even if you did know, you wouldn't tell me? Correct. Why don't you place an advertisement in your newspaper? Yeah, uh, you're a big help. Baby! Oh, Baby. Oh, Paul. Oh, baby. Oh, Paul. Oh, I'm so glad you are here. I apologize. No, no, it was all my fault. I won't let you say such a thing. I was entirely to blame. No, you were not. And I have done something to atone for my foolishness. Oh, Paul, why did you not tell me you were trying to arrange a loan for Mr. Grant, the banker? No, there's no need to bother you with such matters. How do you know Mr. Grant? What do you know about a loan? But I've known Mr. Grant for many years. Uh, just an old friend of the family, I suppose. You keep still. What about the loan? The ambassador told me about it, and he said I must keep very quiet or we would not get the money. So? So I telephoned to Mr. Grant, and he said that if he had known I was the princess baby, he would have given you the loan long ago. You see, Mr. Grant is indebted to me. I introduced him to his wife. You are wonderful, baby. You are wonderful. Where's the money? We will send you the necessary papers today. We will celebrate. We will go home. Oh, boy, let's all go home. Goodbye, Mr. Morley. Oh, my darling. Oh, and so they lived happily ever after. Boy. You are so good to take me back, Madame Tony. I have disgraced you and myself. I'm such a little fool. Nothing of the sort. Forget the whole experience, child. It was very unwise of me ever to allow you to do it. Oh, no, madame. It was my own fault. Nonsense. You are just allowing yourself to dramatize the situation. You made the mistake of falling in love with a young man who obviously was not worthy of you. Now then, forget it and go back to work. Ah, a new line of evening dresses has come in. Go try them on. And if there is one you like particularly well, you may keep it. Yes, Mother. Thank you so much. Hello. Give me the star express, please. Hello? I want to speak to Mr. Morley, please. Yes, he's one of your, rep your reporters. Uh, yes, please. Hello? Hello, Mr. Morley? Mr. Morley, this is Madame Tourney of Third Street. I wonder if you might drop over here to see me. 
No, on personal business. Any time this afternoon, Mr. Morley. Thanks so much. You seem like a very presentable young man, Mr. Morley. You don't look at all like an ogre. Now, look, you didn't ask me here, madame, to compare me with mythical animals. Now, what's this all about? I have been hearing quite a little about you, Mr. Morley, and I wanted to see you for myself. Who's been talking about me? One of our models here. I don't know any models. Maybe you got the wrong guy. Mm, you know this one, I think. Her name is Rochelle. Rochelle? Where is she? I want to see her. I've been looking all over town for her for a week. Where is she? Uh, suppose I have her come in. Oh, pardon my boyish enthusiasm and lack of self-control, madame. Hear <laughs> <laughs> me, please. Uh, ask Rochelle to come up here at once, please. Oh, madame, how can I thank you for this? No, don't yet. Wait and see if she'll speak to you first. I'll leave you here to wait for her uh, alone. There. Uh, let's see now. Uh, <clears throat> Hello. No, that won't do. Hello there. No. All right. You wanted me, madame... Oh! Very much. Go away. Now, that's not very reasonable. I'm here and you came in. If there's any going away to be done, you're the one to do it. How'd you get here? Well, taxi cabs, we call them in this country. A man drives and you tell him where you want to go and he takes you there. It's quite simple. Mm, you're most amusing. Thanks. You're not so bad yourself. I am leaving. No, no, wait, Rochelle, please. Oh, let me go. You walked out once before and it took me a week to find you. I'm sorry, darling. Really, I am. Did you say... Darling? Yes, yeah, darling. Oh, I see. Darling. Now I'm going away. Going away? Hmm? Where? To Vermont. Are you going alone? No, I'm taking my wife. But you are single. Are you getting married? Sure I am. Have you asked her to marry you yet? Not yet, no. Well, then how do you know she would marry you? I've got a sneaking idea. Well, you're very sure of yourself, Mr. Joe Morley. I'll say I am. Why, I'm offering her the life of a princess. Then I am sure she will answer Gentlemen, you have just heard Model Princess, a radio play starring America's favorite French ingenue, Simone Simone, and presented from coast to coast over the mutual network from the audience studios of WGN in Chicago. And now, if Miss Simone's had a chance to catch her breath after that final romantic love scene, we'd like to ask her to step out of character for a minute. Um, I think our audience will agree that Miss Simone gave a very beautiful performance this afternoon. Miss Simone. I understand, um, I understand, Miss uh, Simone, that you're to be doubly congratulated. Am I right in saying that this is only your third time speaking before a microphone in this country? Yes, Mr. Andre. You see, I'm still just a beginner. <laughs> well, you certainly sounded like a veteran. Uh, how do you like radio acting, Miss Simone? Oh, I think any kind of acting is fun. On the stage, in the movies, on the radio, I love it. Tell us, is this your first visit to Chicago? Yes, it is. And I hope it won't be the last. Uh, I think it's a beautiful town. And this WGN studio is one of the most beautiful I've ever seen, here or abroad. Uh, you have another first to your credit, too, I know. Your present role in Three After Three is your first in an American stage play or musical, isn't it? Yes. Well, you see, all the work I've done in this country was in Hollywood. Uh, Miss Simone, suppose now, for the sake of the ladies listening in, you give us the French viewpoint on American style. What do you think of our shops, for instance? Well, it's a good thing we are doing a lot of rehearsing. Oh, I need to stop shopping. I've seen so many beautiful things in your Chicago shops I'd love to buy. Well, as I said, it's a good thing with rehearsing so much. <laughs> Another thing I'd like to ask, Miss Simone, how many movies did you make in Paris before you came to Hollywood? Quite a few, about yeah. ten. Did you do any stage plays or musicals over there? Yes, both. In fact, most of my work was uh, in musical comedy. 
And another question. What are your plans after the road tour New York run of three after three? Well, if business keeps on as good as it has been, that's too far off to worry about. Well, thanks very much, Simone Simone. And ladies and gentlemen, featured in tonight's play with Miss Simone, Roland Soleil as Joe Morley, Louise Barkley as the princess, Bret Morrison as Prince Paul, Rene Rodier as Madame Turney, and Willard Waterman as the editor. The drama was written by Noel B. Gerson, the orchestra was conducted by Harold Stokes, and the production was directed by Blair Walliser. Next Sunday, listen for Glenda Farrell, Alan Dinehart, and Lyle Talbot in Jungle Drums, another premiere on Fifth Row Center. Pierre Andre speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Oh, my God.